Hello and welcome. In linear dynamics, the mode superposition method provides a very efficient method of determining the response of a system in the frequency domain or time domain. This method uses a linear combination of modes for calculating the response of a structure over a range of frequencies. For any structure, we can extract as many modes as nodal degrees of freedom. While extracting all such modes will yield accurate results, it will be time consuming and computationally expensive task. Thus, it becomes crucial to understand the adequate number of modes that should be extracted for getting results with sufficient accuracy. In this video, we will explain modal truncation and also discuss some guidelines on how to extract enough modes and still get very accurate results. So come on, let's get started. While determining the structural response of any linear system, the use of generalized coordinates or modal methods is attractive. But why? Because a traditional displacement DOF describes the deformation of a node in only one direction, while a generalized coordinate DOF is a mode shape which provides more information. Thus, by using generalized coordinates, we require fewer DOFs to describe the response of any system. For most structures, the dynamic response can be captured with a few hundred modes or less, leading to an efficient solution. Also, we usually perform a modal analysis first to understand the dynamic characteristics of our system, so we already have the modal information. For any structure, the total number of modes is equal to the number of nodal DOFs. But while performing any analysis, we extract modes far less than this number due to the computational constraints. If we extract all the modes present in the numerical model, it would lead to the exact results with no numerical errors. However, even if we extract fewer modes that appropriately capture the structure's response, we will still get highly accurate results. Let's understand this by considering and simple example of a cantilever beam that is experiencing harmonic loading at one of its ends. In the first case, the modes extracted are far less than the number of nodal DOFs, while in the second case, the extracted modes are approximately equal to the number of nodal DOFs. However, if we observe the deformation results of both cases, we notice that the results are quite similar. But the question which arises now is how to ensure that enough modes are computed to get accurate results. To answer this question, let's discuss some guidelines. The first is to identify the appropriate frequency range. Here, the rule of thumb for modal sufficiency is to compute modes up to 1.5 times the highest frequency in the excitation frequency range. However, it is not a hard and fast rule, but just a recommendation. For example, if the excitation frequency range of any mechanical system is 60 Hz, then the model analysis should compute modes up to 1.5 times this frequency, which would be 90 Hz. This would ensure that enough modes get computed to capture the accurate structural response of the system. Next. Analyze the ratio of effective mass to total mass. After solving any model analysis, it is always recommended to check the ratio of effective mass to the total mass in the direction of excitation or the direction of the expected response. A ratio above 0.9 or 90% is generally preferred. To better understand this, let's consider a structure that experiences harmonic loading in the z direction. In the first case, fewer modes were computed. Hence, we could observe that this results in a ratio of effective mass to the total mass of 0.46 or 46%, which indicates that enough modes have not been computed to capture the structure's mass. This may lead to results where the structure's response is underpredicted. However, in the second case, a higher number of modes were computed. 
here the ratio of effective mass to total mass is 0.93 or 93 percent which indicates that most of the significant modes have been extracted leading to better accuracy. Finally, understanding the actual modes. After solving any model analysis, it is very important to visually review the mode shapes and to analyze the participation factors in the direction of excitation. Understanding which modes have high participation factor is crucial because these are the significant modes that would be used in the dynamic calculations. Also, based on the applied loading and the expected response, we need to determine whether these modes would be sufficient to capture the system's behavior appropriately. Let's understand this by considering an example of a suspension bridge that experiences base acceleration in the y direction. We observe that the assembly consists of a platform and cables. The cables have lower bending stiffness values. Due to this, we see that all the extracted modes are capturing the response of these individual cables and there are no modes of the platform. Also, while the participation factors of these cables are not negligible, they are very localized and thus have a lower contribution to the structural response of the system. Hence, this would indicate that to capture the appropriate response of the platform, which is of prime interest, we need to extract more modes. But it's not always feasible to extract a high number of modes. Hence, let's further discuss some tools to help with accuracy in case of fewer modes. First is the residual vector method, which can be included for harmonic and transient response analysis. This method is useful when the localized forces are acting on the structure causing localized deformation. In such instances, high frequency modes may be needed to capture such localized deformation, but the residual vector method presents an efficient alternative. The second is the missing mass method which can be included in response spectrum analysis. In some cases, we may extract enough modes to cover a wide frequency range, but the effective mass may still be relatively low. Also, for base excitation in a response spectrum analysis, the effective mass of the structure is important in obtaining an accurate response. Hence, the missing mass method is an efficient technique to include the effect of this missing mass without having to extract a very large number of modes. Let's now get better understanding of these concepts with the help of a walkthrough example in ANSYS Mechanical. For the walkthrough example, we will consider a clamp designed to support the external components connected to it and these components can exert a horizontal fluctuating load at one of the ends. Our goal is to determine the harmonic response of this clamp for such loading using a harmonic analysis with the mode superposition technique. The clamp is made of structural steel and it is subjected to 50 newtons of fluctuating load. For our example, let us fix the clamp on these vertical faces. Now, how to determine the number of modes to extract in model analysis for accurate results in harmonic analysis? Well, for that, let us perform a model analysis to observe the modes for the given boundary conditions. We have the analysis system already added with the geometry along with material assignment and meshed with a 4 mm element size. Now, click on the model analysis item in the tree outline for defining the boundary conditions. Set the selection mode to face using Ctrl F and then select these three vertical faces. Now right click and insert fixed support for them. With six default modes, let us solve the model analysis. Once it is solved, select all modes from the tabular data and right click to create mode shape results. Right click on solution and evaluate all results. Let us observe the first six mode shapes for this clamp. Had we run this case in a static structural analysis with similar boundary conditions, this is how the deformation shape would have been. 
we can see that none of the modes matches the deformed shape that we got from the structural analysis. Moreover, under solution information, select participation factor summary. Here we can see that the ratio of effective mass to the total mass in the y direction is very small. Let us perform M sub harmonic analysis now. For that, go back to project schematic page. Drag the harmonic response analysis and drop it on the solution cell of the model analysis. This will create the necessary links for the M sub harmonic analysis. Update the model analysis system. In the mechanical interface under harmonic analysis settings, we can see that the solution method is set as mode superposition already. Set the frequency range from 0 Hz to 5000 Hz. Switch on cluster results and set cluster number to 10. Also, set the damping ratio at 0.02. Now, select the circular face of the hole on the positive y direction and right click on the context menu. Insert force defined by components and with 50 newtons in positive y direction. Right click on solution and insert frequency response for deformation. Select the body and use maximum spatial resolution. Set the y axis orientation to see the response. Now solve the case. Once the solution is done, we do not have any high amplitude peaks in the frequency response chart. This may be an inaccurate result and we may need to extract more modes in modern analysis for accurate results in harmonic analysis. Let us go back to modal analysis and increase the max mode so fine to 20 and solve it. Once the solution is done, select the modes from 7 to 20 using the shift key from the tabular data and right click to create mode shape results. Right click on solution and evaluate all results. Let us also check the participation factor summary. Here we can see that the first prominent mode in y direction is observed at mode 11. Moreover, the ratio of effective mass to the total mass in the y direction has also improved. The mode shape of this mode also looks similar to the deformed shape from the static structural analysis. So let us solve the harmonic analysis now and see if this mode falls within the applied frequency range. Here we can observe a peak amplitude in the frequency response chart. Right click on the frequency response and create control results to see the directional deformation. Thus, we get the desired result with a sufficient number of modes in model analysis. With this, we conclude our walkthrough workshop. While performing linear dynamic analysis using the mode superposition method, it is important to carefully decide the number of modes that need to be extracted. Guidelines such as frequency range, the ratio of effective mass to total mass, and understanding the actual modes can help to decide on the number of modes that would be sufficient for achieving accurate results. Additionally, tools like the residual vector method and missing mass method can be helpful in case enough modes cannot be extracted for specific linear dynamic analysis types. I hope you have found this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.